today is um, first we'll um, show what we have developed. This is, this is really the purpose, the objective of today's meeting is to show our ESG reporting method, the solution that we call triple bottom line and receive your first feedback. You know, We will show how you can illustrate ESG performance, take you through the entire framework, even present an example of the metrics that we have found and explain you the method and there it actually becomes a little bit more technical and the finance people and controlling people will may appreciate that more than others. We will show how you can scale and consolidate ESG performance so that at the end of the day, you receive one cumulative figure. So the first thing I wanna show you is our design proposal. Um, it looks a little bit similar, similar to what I've already presented, but now we are a lot more uh, clear about what we want to do. What you see here on this chart is what we think should eventually be on in your annual report, where you have a financial performance and you're adding all the other aspects of performance to arrive at a company performance. What you see here is, is an actual example. It's, it's actually Logitech that we used here for this uh, analysis, and it's all based on public data. So it's not proprietary. And we decided that these are aspects that we think are important for this company, but this aspect, these aspects are actually individual. Every company decides on their own what, are, what their priorities are, but they use the method to come then at the same overall company performance. Now we contrast that with how it's done today. And you see that down here, uh, what is done today when you, when you look at performance, you basically get, you know, in the terms of financial, you get millions in profits, millions in sales. You get employee, you know, uh, inclusion percentages or satisfaction of employees, satisfaction of customers, audit percentages when it comes to emissions. It goes to tons, uh, tons. Energy is normally measured in your in your sustainability report as chows. Again, governance maybe there is mostly about compensation. How much? you pay your executives is, is typically done there. And then the rating agencies con convert that in some sort of rating here, you know, something that we've guessed for this company. This is how it's done today. And we believe this is a lot less intuitive than what we're suggesting here. We're converting everything to a performance from zero to top performance, where the middle uh, line is your target. But this is now a technical, the technical background of what we have here. What you see up here are the results of the individual performances for each category that we have chosen, weighted by the weight they have for overall performance. Here it's equally weighted, but we could easily say that financials get a higher weight, which then would make this bar higher, on the cost of other bars, which then have a lower weight. So what you see here is a weighted result. This would already take into account whatever you found are the most relevant metrics for your company. And then those metrics would have a higher um, weight. What we see down here is the individual contribution without a weight. And you see that the result is the same. The average of these here is basically the company overall performance. And here you can also see that governance was not at target. While it's still a positive contribution because it's not at zero, it's a below target contribution. And the same is true for customers here in this case. So the idea is to convert something like this, which might actually be more confusing, especially if you want to put weights on, on, on certain aspects, you know, into something that looks positive, where everything has a contribution, even though some of the contributions are lower than others. In order to arrive at this triple bottom line graphic, we need two things. We need scaling and consolidation rules to make all financial and ESG metrics comparable. And we need the ESG metrics themselves. And you may remember from last meeting, we looked at 1,200. We looked at 1,200 metrics, and Candice organized them into um, the different um, 
into different categories. And I think I'd like to hand over now to Candice. I think um, we may have shown a little bit of this before, um, but it's really just to say that from, you know, these, uh, the, to give you a bit of an idea of how we approach this. So with these 1200 plus metrics that we had um, accumulated from various different uh, providers, uh, you know, we did uh, quite a lot of categorization of them. So uh, the, res the goal for us was really to try to create a bit of a structure to make it a little bit easier to navigate and to identify which are the metrics that are really the most important for you um, from a compensation perspective, but then also from a, from a reporting perspective so that you can come to a more robust um, reporting um, um, practice. So uh, in doing so, there were really a lot of ways that we looked at this. And, you know, in going through these 1200 metrics, we found that uh, we ended up creating a structure that um, looked at the metrics from a few different perspectives. So one of them was really in terms of that overall type. And that's what we call our over um, the metric structure. And even here, there's 32 different uh, types of metrics that we've identified. So originally we looked at, you know, the type, if it's a number, if it's a yes, no question, is it a percentage? Um, and in the end, we found that there's actually almost 32 different ways or 30 different, 32 different categories that these metrics fall into. Um, you know, I think uh, starting out, we thought that it would really be around different value, uh, per numerical values, um, but there's actually quite a lot that, uh, that that we found, and I'll go into a, a little bit more detail, um, not into all 32 uh, in this call, um, but just to say that there was a there was a structuring that we that we did in this framework that looked at the type and the nature of the metric itself. The other view that we took was to really look at the thematic uh, and create some thematic categories. So here we really go into ESG, um, you know, into the environmental metrics. And they also break them down into things like emissions, energy, uh, resources, et cetera. Uh, so we have created 30, 33 different thematic categories. Even there, uh, around something like emissions, um, there's still quite a range that's included, uh, even when we look at just the thematic categories. And there we've also have um, in the files that we'll send you afterwards, even sub subcategories. So emissions broken up into uh, a few different uh, subcategories. Uh, and then the other thing that we did, um, and this is less of a structuring exercise, but we assigned the metrics also to uh, different GRI codes um, so that when you are, uh, when you have the files, you can also search for certain GRI codes, or if you're looking at focusing on a certain metric that you then are sure to include that in your GRI report in that particular area. And in looking through these 1,200, we came to a, a, a long list uh, of almost 300 metrics. And the way that we got from 1,200 to 300 is really by eliminating duplication by, because uh, as you can imagine, a lot of different providers are looking at uh, similar topics, um, you know, removing certain things that are less relevant, let's say, from a compensation or reporting perspective, but that's could be, you know, that are descriptive about a company uh, that could still be relevant um, uh, from, a, from a different perspective. From that 280, we then uh, uh, really narrowed down to about 140, well, uh, nearly 150 metrics that we still uh, would recommend for you to consider from a compensation and reporting perspective. Now, as Herman said, we didn't apply any kind of a value lens on here. So these are really across all of the different ESG uh, topics, you know, the metrics that we think that you could consider. So uh, when we started this exercise, this gives you a little bit of an idea of this structure, the metric structure that I talked about. Uh, in the beginning of this exercise, I really was expecting to see much more of what we call values uh, achieved. So these are, you know, what is the level of um, uh, emissions of uh, greenhouse gas emissions, scope one, two, and three? What is the percentage of diversity that you have within your executive base, within your employee base, et cetera? And what we found is that there's actually a much wider um, set of metrics that, uh, that we've come across. And if they range from, and that these kind of groupings of metrics also follow a little bit of a, a almost like a process flow. So there are a lot of uh, these yes, no type questions or almost descriptive 
uh, uh, points that we came across which address, is there a policy or a strategy in place to address A, B, or C? Um, and so we've grouped a lot of these metrics or classified them here into what we call policy and strategy. So they reflect an intention of a company to address a certain topic. The next one is a little bit similar to policy and strategy. So we've called these improvement programs. So these are the metrics that say, you know, is there a program in place to promote diversity in the workplace? Is there a program in place to, to uh, increase the percentage of renewable energy? Is uh, Are there targets that the company has set uh, for emissions, um, uh, et cetera? And so this was one group that we've now put into what we call improvement programs. The other one is that there are also a number of metrics out there, well, let's say a smaller number, that try to reflect whether or not a company is also entered into certain corporations. So has the, is the company a signatory to the UN Global Compact? Is the company a signatory to the principles of responsible investing, uh, et, et cetera? So we've also captured, I would say, in these two groups around policy, strategy, and improvement, the intention uh, of a company to improve in a certain area. And uh, I think here, uh, as we get further into the presentation, you'll see that we also have ways that we've, um, that you could also inc include these types of metrics in a, comp in, in a compensation program. Uh, so it's not necessarily uh, including the actual level, which is the next column that we have, but really compensating for that breadth of policies or programs that you'd have across um, uh, any of the ES and G, ES or G uh, topics. You, you called it, uh, Kenneth, you called it effort, you know? Yep. There's, a, there's a big uh, reward or uh, from ESG rating agencies only just for the effort. If you want to do something, and a lot of the ESG rating is actually how much effort you put in improving things, and we should reward that too. And I think it's an important point to capture uh, because I think here investors and as we see through the agent rating agencies uh, are uh, are interested in understanding what the company is starting to do, how much effort they are putting in, even if um, you know as something to view in addition to the actual values or performance that they've achieved. Um, uh, so it is that effort, and there's uh, quite a lot, which is the, the next um, category around reporting. So how transparent, how thorough uh, is a company when it comes to reporting about their policies, strategies, initiatives, um, the levels that they've uh, achieved around anything around the methodology or around, uh, you know, whether or not there's been verification or a, an audit by a third party. So uh, I think here, this is, you know, the, kind of these different buckets that we saw for uh, around um, effort that a company is putting in around a policy or program, the actual values that they've achieved or the performance levels that they've achieved, and then how they report about it. So this is sort of this flow that we started to see emerge as we were working through these different metrics. Uh, and I think the importance here is really when it comes to a compensation perspective to look beyond uh, simply the actual levels, um, you know, more towards some of the effort and the transparency that a company is putting, um, placing a priority on as well. So just something to consider uh, besides the, the actual numerical values that a company may be achieving. When we were, excuse me, selecting these uh, metrics and trying to decide which ones would, would be appropriate from a compensation perspective, uh, we found that there were a few principles that started to emerge. So as Herman said, we didn't apply uh, our own values onto the selection of the metrics. We really tried to keep that in the background and try to stay neutral to say, okay, based on the type of metric and the way that um, the, the metric is selected or used, you, you know, that you really choose from this wider set of metrics based on the priorities that are relevant for your own company. So every there may be some uh, topics that are more common to many companies, uh, but then there is gonna be uh, quite a number that are very specific to your industry, to the company's priorities, et cetera. So we didn't go into any of these value judgments. We provide, really tried to provide the range of the metrics for you to select the ones that reflect your topical priorities. 
The next one is that we really try to focus on metrics that are um, that are influenced, that can be influenced by your executives and your employees. And this may sound obvious, but there are quite a lot of, uh, let's say, governance metrics uh, out there, which you know uh, your average executive or employee can't really influence. So there are a lot of metrics around board structure. Um, nomination processes, the tenure of board members, et cetera, which people within the company have really much less influence over. So we didn't include them in the selection of metrics that would be relevant from a compensation perspective. That's not to say that we don't find them important um, in and of themselves. The third principle, and this is more of a, a little bit more of an observation, we really try to include metrics there. Um, you know, there's the ones that follow a certain process, but there are also certain metrics which we call hygiene factors. Uh, so, you know, which are just good business practices, um, which we have included. And there are a few within the governance area that we thought could still be appropriate and relevant for com from a compensation perspective um, for you to choose from. Um, but these are more of sort of good business practice uh, or hygiene factors. And on the other end of the scale, you have some that are more aspirational. So uh, really trying to, uh, let's say, uh, increase um, or only use, uh, let's say, renewable material, uh, renewable energy, only use sustainable materials, uh, really reduce the level of scope three emissions. So, you know, not only your um, your direct emissions or those within your supply chain, but even looking broader uh, into kind of the, the, the customer base and that, that uh, broader um, uh, impact uh, that a company has. So I think when you look through the metrics, you'll see that some are uh, quite basic uh, in the sense that they are lean more on this edge of, of hygiene uh, and more on the side of aspirational. We've really tried to include both uh, within our um, within our re recommended list, the fourth principle is like I said that we've included a lot of these yes/no metrics, and I think originally or intuitively one might think that from a compensation perspective you should include the, uh, only the metrics that you can really quantify. Um, and I think here we have a few different ways that uh, Herman will talk about ways that you could also include these yes/no metrics. Um, into a compensation to help reflect really the effort that a company is putting into a particular ESG topic, uh, even if it doesn't result in a, um, in a numerical value. So that's something that you can consider uh, in, in, in that selection as well. Uh, and then the next one is that really <clears throat> we've, uh, we've kept this list rather long. Uh, also, because we know that, as we just looked at earlier, we do have recommendations on how you can consolidate uh, some of these metrics, a, a higher number of metrics into a simple presentation of, uh, of, of the performance by consolidating um, the number of different metrics and rolling them up. And we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later on as well. But we've given, um, taken the liberty to give you a long list to choose from, uh, knowing that there are ways that you can also um, uh, handle a large number of metrics without it having to become necessarily too, too complex um, uh, for people to, for you, from a reporting perspective or for, from, a, from the perspective of uh, really managers um, uh, trying to uh, achieve the goals. Uh, and then the sixth uh, point is, uh, I'll just to say that we chose metrics and the way that you measure these metrics could be relative to peers, but it could also be against internal targets. And we see that there's uh, room for both approaches to be uh, accommodated in, uh, you know, in, in, in a compensation plan. So in summary, uh, what, what Candice has said is we are, you're providing um, a long list of metrics where you choose uh, what you uh, want, what, what, is, what is important for you. And this long list of metrics is actually supported by categories, subcategories and sub-subcategories and a, an elimination of duplication. So um, you have a lot of organization uh, within that long list, including what Candice showed, the process flow that certain yes, no criteria almost always, no matter where they are in social environment or governance, they almost always have policy programs, sometimes values. They have, they have 
different aspects and you can identify where you stand and maybe start at the beginning and then slowly work yourself up. And we provide a guidance for you how to, how to select the metrics that you find important and how you can go step by step so that not everybody, everything has to be achieved in the first year. So uh, in terms of the metrics, uh, you know, like I said, so we touched a little bit on uh, the way that we've approached it. And when we deliver this to you, what you'll get is very similar to the list that uh, I've just shown here. So you'll have the metrics sorted by the categories that we've defined. And these categories are the, the ES, you know, environment, uh, social governance, and then a kind of an overall ESG category. And then we have these um, 33 or so subcategories. Uh, and then we can also deliver to you the sub subcategories. Uh, but I think that, you know, at, at this point, uh, for, for, it could be a good reference for you, but maybe not as, not as critical uh, now that we have filtered down the list. Um, but then we, you'll also see the metric definition. So the actual me metrics that we are recommending as part of that short list. The grouping, so this is the metric grouping refers back to what I was mentioning earlier, you know, whether the metric falls into this group of sort of around policy strategy, being around a certain improvement, uh, or, you know, it's more focused on the reporting um, uh, efforts of the company, the GRI code for the respective metrics, uh, as well as the, the, the actual type of metric, whether it's a yes, no, a text, fields or a numerical value. So that's just to give you a little bit of a sense of what this actual list will look like uh, once, you, once you get it. Um, and then on the next slide, we just wanted to take you through a little bit of an example. So this is how you could actually use the framework. So on the right-hand side, you see an excerpt of the, the metric list. Um, and then as we said, you know, the first thing would be to, to, to choose the the priority that your company has set. So in this example, we've said, you know, looking at uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, the next thing you would do is to take a look at the type of measure it is. So do you want to focus, like I said, on the effort that a company is putting in, or do you want to focus on the actual result that has been achieved? Uh, in this case, for this example, we've said looking at the values um, or levels, which is the actual uh, result that uh, that a company has achieved. On. So in this example, we said to, uh, we would choose the ones that you see by the four. So absolute emissions and greenhouse gas across all scopes, scopes one, two, and three. Um, and I pulled out this example just so that I can also make the side notes that you'll see here, there's scope one, two, and then there's a metric um, called scope two slash three. And this is really where we see, uh, and then a scope three. And scope two slash three is, because sometimes uh, the 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 you know investors are looking at is it are they direct or indirect emissions so are they coming from your own production or are they coming from you know supply chain customers etc and and then the fifth one is around consolidation so the consolidation may be around using a particular met uh, metric or it could also be then around the consolidation uh, method that uh, Herman talks about uh, just after this section. Then on the next slide, we have the second example. So uh, the first one was really looking at how it would look if you were to choose a, a performance value as the, the metric. And here we took an example, let's say, um, where you could focus more on the effort that a company is putting in. So if we look at inclusion, let's say you wanted to include in your, um, in your compensation the amount of effort that's going into uh, you know, really pro having that diversity policy or strategy um, across a number of different areas. And uh, as we go through the metrics, we see that there's quite a lot of granularity. It's not only about gender, as you all, as I'm sure as you all know, but around a lot of different uh, qualities as well. And so that's something that we've broken down here. So in this example, you could say, we really want to look at diversity and you know how much of a we have that built into uh, policies and strategies across a number of different areas, um, and that's something that we include into the compensation. From a reporting perspective, we want to make sure that we are reporting then the numbers, uh, uh, the actual numbers that we're that we're seeing. But that's not necessarily something that's being built into compensation. And then from a consolidation perspective, I uh, just um, you know to say that there are ways to to group. A large number of metrics into a into a simple more simplified view. 
for the compensation or reporting. This is now a little bit technical, so you have to listen carefully um, because all these um, technical aspects matter uh, so that we can, at the end of the day, really consolidate the performance up uh, to a common consolidated performance. Basically, what is the first thing that is important that we have is a unified scale, a universal scale that we have for each metric, we have a target, which we have now decided to use 1.0 times target as the target level, where you basically have achieved your target. If you're better uh, than the, the target, you will get a better performance, which in this scale now goes all the way up to 2.0 times target, which then again means that the worst performance is zero times target. Using this idea of times target uh, is, is very much in line with compensation design. People typically get a target bonus. And if they have uh, a number of 1.0 times target bonus, then they get their target bonus. And everything above that is an outperformance. Everything below that is an underperformance. It's also possible to have a scale from 0 to 100. And then 50 is basically the target but it's a little bit less intuitive. So one thing we want to do is we want to convert every metric into this picture here. Now, when we, that means we have to set a target for every metric that we want to use. And we need to set a maximum achievement and a minimum achievement for each target. And this sometimes is a little bit inconvenient because you know, when you set targets with your manager, managers, you have um, the sandbagging and negotiation problem. So one solution to overcome this is to use benchmarks. And uh, this is not always possible, but where it is possible, we can then again use the exact same scale where we say now uh, the, uh, the performance is basically how many peers have you surpassed? And that peer outperformance can only go from 0% to 100%. And if we dare say you have surpassed 50% of your peers, you would again have a value of 1.0 times target for consolidation purposes. You can have different scales, but our proposal would be whenever you have something where you want to achieve a certain higher level in that period that you're looking at, maybe in that following year, then you know, we recommend this type of performance assessment, this type of scaling. Uh, because then we can consolidate it. If we have three or four or five different metrics, we can use an average metric for all those five metrics. Now we have one problem. Some of those metrics in ESG are not, cannot be increased forever. You know, when we measure in financial performance, you can always increase your revenues. You can always increase your profits. You can always increase your share returns. But when you look at how much renewable energy you're using, you can only go to 100%. And in ESG, that's quite often the case. You can only go to 50%, you know, gender equality. And when you go above 50%, you're actually uh, going down on the other side of the hill. So very often in ESG, you basically have an ultimate level and you cannot do more. You cannot eliminate it, eliminate more than all of your carbon emissions. So we have that level problem. What do we do when we have achieved a very high level? Because then uh, it's ever more difficult to be better than peers or to achieve an ever higher target. And the solution uh, we have drafted, uh, we call the consolidation rule two. Uh, the con consolidation rule two is about rewarding high levels of achievement. And I have here a case for recycling or renewable performance where a level of 100% is max. You cannot do more than 100% recycling. And the idea there is to not go to two times bonus at 100% recycling, because maybe the year before you've already been at 100% you know, recycling. So we, uh, and it would be probably difficult to justify then, you know, a two times bonus all the time. But we also would not limit it to one times bonus because that's not very motivating. Basically, that means whenever you don't reach 100% recycling, you get punished. You get less than target salary. And one solution that we're proposing here to go slightly above 
the 1.0 times target bonus level, maybe to 1.2. That would allow us to, as, to also assess the level of performance that you're having. And what you see down here is a description of what I just said. Uh, maybe just one thing to the right here. Sometimes uh, a lower level is difficult to achieve. And you can also make that curve steeper and then growing slower after you're reaching the one times bonus level. And with these rules, we can consolidate everything up to the triple bottom line graph that we have shown before. I, I have one remark that I would like to add here. And this is what do we do with the many, many yes, no criteria? And my feeling is that you have um, a lot of policies, programs, measurement challenges that you want to start where it's difficult to get buy-in from management. And I would really add those yes, no achievements that you want to have as its, as, as its own performance metric, where you make a target, how many of the yeses you want to achieve in that period, how many yeses are the max, how many yeses are the minimum, and add that as a compensation component to your ESG performance, because that could really get buy-in from the management team to get quicker implementation over time. Okay, thank you very much for joining us.